Welcome back to Grid Down Prepping at Guns America Digest. If you haven't subscribed yet, you should go to gunsamerica.com slash digest. And there's a lot of great gun stuff. We have the best reviews in the business, along with specialty publications like this prepping magazine, um, which will go out as a quarterly. Usually there are articles that go along with these that also have product links on them and a lot of stuff that I just forget to say in the video. So it's a good idea to subscribe so you get our email, you see when stuff comes out. I found a rocket stove a while ago that I've covered a couple times um, since moving over to Grid Down, and it's that African relief stove. And what I liked about it is that it is, it's used by people in the field. It was created for people in the field. Um, and it holds a big pot without tipping over. It's, it's, it's a great design. The problem is, is that those come out of China and it's been um, unreliable to get more of them. These stoves are actually used by Turkish people. They're made in Turkey by a local machine shop who hand makes them. You'll see that all the welds are by hand Everything was bent by hand with, you know, with tools, obviously, with machines. But everything was cut, bent, and welded by one person, one at a time. These are handmade products made out of not, not terribly thick steel, but good enough. The, my, my biggest reservation with them is that they have very sharp edges. These are made for villagers in Turkey. Okay, not for cushy Americans who are used to, you know, safety edges on everything. So there are some sharp edges on these. So if you're one of those people, like we had people on the other Turkey product, um, you know, like one guy even did a chargeback because a couple of his bottom legs were bent in and he didn't want to unbend them. He just wanted his money back. Um, or he wanted a replacement, I'm sorry. He, 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 he wanted a replacement, and we didn't have any replacements because they're gone, um, and he was very upset. So if you're concerned about sharp edges or a product that is, you know, has, has um, powder coating or something like that, good luck. You know, th this is not these, all right? These are from a machine shop in Turkey. And... Um, we actually had to send the machine shop guy who owns this place, and they have boxes. They have, this is a product in Turkey. They, this is a store product. Um, there's, there's printed boxes and all that for them. Um, but he actually wanted a video to prove from the guy who exported them that they were being sold in the United States. And they haven't been sold in the United States yet because I have been, because we have so few of them, I've just been unwilling to do it because the, we are able to get the, the African relief stove and obviously these, you know, these don't deteriorate, they're not going anywhere and they're only going to go up in value as people understand the need for being able to cook off a grid. These guys are really something else. I've actually seen a video of them, of the big one here, going full bore at night and the entire thing was glowing red because they're, they're meant for some serious fire and, and, and they will hold a good deal of heat. The, the, the three sizes are more about how big of a pot do you intend to cook. Like if you're gonna be running a still, say you, you're, you're growing sugar cane, hypothetically speaking, right? And you wanna run a still and make rum out of it, out of the sugar cane juice, hypothetically. If you're doing that, then you're going to want a really good heat source like the big guy, okay? If you're cooking a vat, like I just met a guy who's got like, he's up to like seven families now in a remote location um, out in Sebring, Florida. And he's, um, you know, they're going to be cooking vats of food. If you're cooking a big vat of food, you probably should get, you know, the big guy. If you want to be able to use your wood stove wood, I'm going to show you the size of the openings, then you might want to get the big guy. You know, otherwise, this is extremely stable. It is used by villagers with big pots, but it, things just won't cook as fast. They won't, you have to stoke it more. You have to put more wood in it. 
you have to keep it fired more, keep it fired longer. Um, when it comes to fuel and BTUs, it's six of one, half a dozen of the other for how much cooking they actually will do. It's really just your preference for what you want. But, but, but it's, it's, a, it's a killer stove. And I actually, I'm actually going to light one of these because I need some ashes anyway. I, it, lighting rocket stoves at this point is kind of pointless, um, as is going through the whole rocket stove mythology. But, but I will briefly, I, I will briefly um, explain that. I need the ashes because I, I want to go plant some yams. I want to cut up one of these true yams. Um, from that David the good guy and, and he suggests that you that you put him in ashes so I need some ashes um, but but I will I will explain the rocket stove myth mythology for most of you who have not been paying attention and who, and who will eventually hit this video later I actually encountered my first time this week in one of the YouTube comments of a guy who was repeating what I have explained now for several years many years that um, has met with resistance in the prepper world. Um, but apparently now people are starting to get it. When the term rocket stove was introduced, it was a company called Stove Tech. And I have a couple still. They are stoves that have cement in their walls. And their pitch was for this fairly expensive stove, it was $150 back then. Um, there's someone who's rebooted them recently, and they're selling on Amazon, from what I remember, for about the same price. Um, the, the, the argument was, was that an insulator in the walls of the stove create a chamber, a smaller chamber inside that burns hotter, and that will burn the wood gas and carbon monoxide from the fire. Good luck, because I've seen flames that burn carbon monoxide, and they're blue. That's why Aladdin has a blue flame heater, as I've explained, and why even the wick stoves, the diesel wick stoves that I covered right at the beginning of when I rebooted Prepping 101, that they have a, um, they actually burn blue once you, once you have their draft system in place. So, so a rocket stove never does that. What it does is it does rocket the fire upwards into your cooking utensil. But it makes your cooking utensil black. I'm not cooking anything on these guys today because I'm, I'm not scrubbing off another pan. Um, it does blacken the bottom with carbon of the bottom of your pan or your canner or whatever. But I've, I've canned enough. If you look back through the archives, both on griddownmag.com and on God's America Digest, if you go to the Prepping 101 tab, You'll see that I've, I've done plenty of canning on small rocket stoves, on every rocket stove I've ever done. Um, it's just hot in Florida. I am not standing over a stove today, and I don't need to. I've done enough of it that I know that this little guy will run a canner full bore for as long as you want. There, there were good points about the rocket stoves that they made besides the burning the wood gas, but the stoves were just too heavy and cumbersome and they just weren't worth the effort. But these stoves are, and that's why the people in the villages in Turkey use them. So if you don't have a stove yet, a stove that will burn wood, I'm gonna use pallet wood today. Um, most people have some supply of wood that they can get to. Then you really should get a wood burning stove. An open fire just does not cook fast enough. You need some kind of container to direct that heat upwards. It doesn't need to be insulated. It doesn't need to be fancy. You can do it with a bunch of cement blocks as long as you have the bottom vented and you have air draft. These guys have pretty good air draft control systems, so you should be able to stamp them down pretty, pretty good to get the most heat out of your stove. And I'll see that they have a double wall system, which is something of an insulator as well. Um, they're cool stoves and um, I arranged for them to be brought into the country for a reason, because America does not need, does not know of any of this stuff. We need it, but no one, Americans don't know about this stuff, and it's far time that we do. I'm gonna pull these in and show you the features of them all as I go. They are obviously very similar, but the stoves are slightly different from each other. This guy 
has what they all have, which is, is a kind of a cannon um, fire director on the top of it. Um, it, it, it. It is a cone system that grabs the fire and actually does physically rocket the fire upwards. This is a very advanced product, like I said, because it's used by real people. Um, but there's just not a lot of these. The small guy, there is the most of them. So let me show you the, the welds, like I said. You know, these guys are really rough, and, and the first time you use this, you're going to see a lot more rust than this. This rust is just from sitting in their warehouse because we honestly took every one that they had. Um, and so this was their back stock. They didn't make these specifically for us. And, and the, 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 the welds, always, welds always rust. I mean, unless you powder coat something or, or hit it with Rust-Oleum right away, it just, it's gonna rust. And this guy is also gonna rust. But this surface rust will, will coat all of this. It probably will rust all of this, all the, all the carbon steel. I don't think this is stainless steel. Um, probably rust it the first time we use it within a day. It'll be all rusted. So don't be disappointed because the stove is rusty. Like I said, you've got very sharp edges here. If I push my finger along that, I'm gonna probably cut myself. So use these at your own risk as well, all right? The, the, the tops are extremely stable and they all have feet that spread out. They are stable enough for a very big pot. Inside, they all have some kind of insert. Okay, the insert is slightly different for all of them. And the insert has a door hole in it that is cut roughly the same size as your door hole. Okay, so the door hole can be, if you want to just put some, some charcoal in there and cook on charcoal, or just a certain amount of wood and you want to close it and stop it up so that it lasts a long time, you can do that. You can stop this up here and they all have a draft control on the bottom. Again, these are very crude, crude products made very crudely, but they will probably service you for many years and they certainly will wait for you. They will wait for you until you need them, which is really what we're all doing. So that's the, the insert, and that, that uh, probably has some kind of draft control function as well. I don't know. Then they have a grate. And this guy has a grate that just sits on three tabs. Now, I don't know, I'm probably gonna, long term, I'm probably gonna try all these stoves with coal, because I do have coal to, to try when I do my coal stuff. But um, this is just a product that they've cut you can see that they've cut this with a torch and it just, it sits in there and this is how the stove goes together. Now, one thing that these products do not have that is actually fairly important when you're physically cooking, especially with a small stove, they do not have a shelf to put your, your, your feed material in because if you're going to be using pallet wood, and I, I did want to show you the, the differences in the sizes of things. If you're going to be using pallet wood like this, okay? This is pallet wood. It fits just fine in even the smallest of stoves. But you don't want to have to cut this. One of the problems with some of the, like the BioLite rocket stove is um, they got rid of their feed stove, their feed version. It was called the camp stove or something. Was, no, the base camp, gone, um, is that they want you to just fill up the stove, take your stuff off, put more fuel in. It's very inconsistent. Whereas if there's a hole on the side and you have a, something to prop your wood up, then you can, you, you really can, you, you've got the, the ability to just keep feeding and keep feeding and keep feeding. As I've explained in prior, in prior, um, articles on rocket stoves, the, the flame, if you're not on top of it, the flame will creep out at some point. So you do have to stand there with rocket stoves. But see, even pallet wood on its side 
fits in this just fine. So you could, you really could load this up, and I'm probably gonna, with 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 wood, like so, and just just keep feeding it until it's until it's done. That is the small guy. Okay, sorry. That is the small guy. Okay. Extremely robust product. It's got this hammered finish to it, which the small and the medium both do, but not the large. The medium guy has a similar kind of construction. A the similar rocket design at the top. Okay. The insert is, again, hand welded with these spacers on the sides. I assume this is some kind of draft control like I explained. And you can run it closed or you can run it open with the draft control in the middle. And it also has a standard kind of grate with your, your air baffle on the bottom here. Okay. And this is the size of the door. See, the, the door is not sticking. The, the, the wood is not sticking in the door because the door is slightly larger. That's the insert there. Okay, but again, you have the same issue. It's about one cement block high. You would need to put a cement block in front of it um, to be able to use it with, to be able to, to just sit and feed your, feed your material in. Cool stove. With sharp edges. Now the big guy, is a monster and it comes with a with a um, grill grate so that you can grill on it you could grill right here on it or you could grill on the top but most likely you would grill here it sits down inside there and it likewise has a similar rocket kind of design and generates an insane amount of heat as I, I said, I've seen this bright red. The insert is a little more elaborate with this guy, okay? Because it comes with a great, this guy has more um, pre-made parts. It comes with this grate in the bottom and the, the, the draft control is, I mean, in the, the and the, the, the sleeve, the jacket, the inside jacket has these pins in it. And the pins are so that you can, you can run this as a charcoal stove, like right up close. Let me put this inside. I'll show, just show you the, the rest of the stove first and then I'll show you it back together. It's, it's, it is pretty, the tolerances are pretty tight. Now this guy is probably the most dangerous of all with the sharp edges because you have such a large bearing surface. It's easy to just shh and slice yourself, you know? So just be aware of that fact that I'm not dreaming here. This is a problem. Just not a, it's not a, a made for prime time product. All right. That's the draft control on it. And it has also a, a molded base a very stable molded base. So when I put the insert in, the insert, the, the, the grate can be used right side up like so. Like that. So you could run charcoal on it, okay? You could put it on top there so that there's charcoal there. Um, and that way you could cook on regular charcoal. You can run it, you could take this out and run it upside down just so that your fuel does not, so that 
so that your 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 wood does not fall down into the you know into the the air holes okay you can run it like so okay like that and it will hold your wood up enough that you can just you know shake out your ashes as you go um, it could also be used upside down on these internal pins so it's, it's a very flexible stove holds a lot of wood and the, the door one of the things that, that I think is very important on it is that it's it allows you if you turn your door around it does have a fairly large also um, doorway both long and it's about the same width high but it's not it's maybe a little bit higher um, but it's also much wider so if you're using split wood you could probably take some of your smaller split wood and it will fit in here probably will fit in the medium as well but um, more likely you know you're going to have more leeway that way to put two pieces in or something like that so that you could be feeding more of more wood in at a time that's what i would say is 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 the biggest advantage and like i said if you if you just want a long burn with a lot of heat you know jumping up through there then the big guy is definitely it but there's very very few of them. so they're going to be gone very quickly um, so that that's the overview of these stoves so i've loaded up the large stove with with um, I, I just decided that I need a lot of ashes as far as I know I need a lot of ashes so I'm going to use the big stove and burn a good deal of this stuff okay so just to protect from the wind I'm gonna put its cap right on like so Hopefully I will be able to capture the rocket nature of this as it, as it goes. I have had my challenges over the years lighting rocket stoves, um, especially when I had to do video. This guy seems to be going pretty good. I put a little bit of oil on some of the paper. An accelerant, an accelerant I have learned works better than all the good intentions in Texas combined. <laughs> um, so you can see that already I've got, I've got stuff, I've got licks of fire coming up from the from the top of the stove and it's pretty impressive now already it's pretty impressive the pallet wood caught instantly it was actually from when these guys came in which was many months ago at this point I was having a health issue at the time actually so they sat while I dealt with my health issue for a while and as you can see the pallet is the pallets are going no problem I'm not gonna dirty up the other stoves now because like I said once you use any of these these steel rocket stoves they're gonna rust like as soon as you as it cools down it starts to rust if you have any water in the air at all and where I live, we always have water in the air. In Florida, we always have a fairly high humidity. So it, it starts to rust immediately. So again, you know, I can't stress enough. This, this stove is not for dainty people. It's not for, it, it's, it's this, this, this stove is for people who are taking this mess seriously. That they're not, you know, they're, they're not concerned with how something looks or if it has a brand name. You know, the brand name on these is rocket stoves from Turkey. So <laughs> you just can't, you can't compare it to a, to a retail product that you see at a Cabela's or, or Bass Pro or, or, or 
any outdoor store, Dick's or whatever, you know, you can't you can't compare these these products that were made for the backwoods of Turkey to a retail product that was made for the American consumer market and all of the lawyers that it entails. So you should understand what you're buying and these are incredible. You just can't, you know, you just can't get them anywhere. And I can see that the that this design that they have of the cone that forces the middle heat up in the middle, it's um it is really something else. So that's the Turkish rocket stoves that I have mentioned a few times that some of you have asked when are they going to be available. Um, they're cool. I'll see you next time.